How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan and today I'm going to be doing a review of the new Marilyn Manson album Heaven Upside Down which uh, I re recently acquired about a week or a little bit more ago actually. I'm deciding whether I actually want to review this or not. Um, I'm definitely not going to be doing it in the normal manner. Uh, I'm just going to be kind of sitting and talking about this. Uh, so, I'm just going to have to bear with me because it's not scripted. And if you're seeing this, it means I think it's not garbage enough to pull. So, uh, yeah, let's start. Um, so, yeah, this is Marilyn Manson's new album. Uh, was previously going to be titled Say 10, but then decided to add a few more tracks and actually call it Heaven Upside Down. Uh, now, Say 10 being because it's his 10th studio album um, and it's it's pretty good um, some parts of this album reminds me a little bit of Antichrist Superstar uh, that being tracks like Revelation 12 um, Say 10 kind of reminded me of the Golden Age of Grotesque a bit uh, there's a couple other songs that remind me of Antichrist Superstar 2 a bit, like Threats of Romance has like this kind of like steady, pulsing, like industrial beat that goes along through the entire song. Um, we Know Where You Fucking Live also seems like another track off of that album that could have just been an easily enough a B-side off of Antichrist Superstar. Tattooed in Reverse could have been maybe Mechanical Animals, maybe Grotesque Age of or the Golden Age of Grotesque. Um, then there's a few slower songs like Kill For Me, Saturnalia, and Blood Honey. Um, a lot of people seem to really like Blood Honey for some reason. Like, there's a line in there that's kind of amusing that I like. It's like, I'm not being mean, I'm just being me. Uh, but other than that, I really don't see the big hype about that song. Uh, Saturnalia was a song that was about seven minutes long or seven and a half minutes definitely didn't need to be that long it kind of dragged out for me it was kind of slow it seemed like one of those kind of album filler tracks that you might find on uh maybe antichrist superstar maybe on eat me drink me uh but it didn't seem like it was one of those songs that necessarily had like anything too hooky or too heavy on it so I was not really a big fan of that track Jesus Crisis was okay um, Kill For Me I don't know I didn't find that one really stood out too much I found Kill For Me, Saturnalia and Blood Honey to be probably the weakest tracks in my opinion and probably the slowest tracks so I don't know they didn't really do too much for me. Heaven Upside Down itself it's it's an alright song. It uh, definitely does not deserve to be the title of this album. I don't understand why he thought that would be the best thing for this. Uh, but then, if we're being honest with ourselves, calling this album Say 10 wouldn't be the best representation of this album either, because Say 10 is probably one of the heavier, more like catchy songs on this entire album. Uh, probably top two or three. Um... But yeah, uh, the guitar work in this is pretty simple for the most part. Nothing too flashy or spectacular. Uh, mostly just your kind of like like heavy industrial or slightly metal uh, riffs. Um, I can't remember if the drums were programmed or not, to be honest. Just off the top of my head, uh, I did not listen to this right before doing this review either. Uh, the last time I listened to this was probably a few days ago, to be honest, so... Um, yeah, the best tracks on here are probably Revelation 12, Tattoo in Reverse, We Know Where You Fucking Live, and Say 10. So basically the, four, the first four tracks on this is probably the best thing, uh, and then it just slows right down with the next two tracks, Kill For Me and Saturnalia. Apparently Saturnalia is supposed to be about his dad somehow, but Saturnalia is a holiday where they sacrifice people in some random other country in Europe, I believe. So that's kind of weird. I don't know how that relates to his dad at all. Um, Jesus Crisis 
constant, con seems to just kind of be one of Merrill Manson's kind of edgy tracks, throwing in the name Jesus there to piss off the Christians. Um, Threats of Romance is probably a decent track to go out on, and I, and I like the, uh, the, the saying in there, uh, I like you damaged, but not uh, enough for me to not corrupt or something like that. It's, it's like he wants the person damaged, but not so damaged that he can't like corrupt further. Well, let's quickly just find the lyric here, because it's probably in here. <laughs> yeah, I like you damaged, but I need something left to, yeah, something for me to wreck. So, it's kind of funny, kind of his usual edgy kind of lyrics and whatnot. Um, overall, this was a, a pretty, like I said, decent album. It wasn't like his best album yet, but it also wasn't his worst album. Uh, I feel like... The High End of Low and Eat Me, Drink Me were probably the worst in his discography. Um, it's it's kind of a combination of some of uh, Antichrist Superstar, Golden Age, Golden Age of Grotesque, mist, mixed with kind of the production and the evolution that he's gone through since Born Villain and Pale Emperor. Uh, if you like those two albums, definitely pick this up. But I'm going to tell you right now that not every track is going to be a banger. Not every track is going to be super heavy or catchy. Uh, like I said, Kill For Me, Saturnalia, and Blood Honey are, are pretty damn slow. Uh, and there's nothing super groovy or hooky in it. Um, Jesus Crisis is pretty okay at best. Uh, he's kind of got that repetitive line that he throws in there that kind of gets heavy. Um, Heaven Upside Down is... Kind of a lackluster album title track. I mean, there's some parts that's good, but it's, you know, the, fir like the first four tracks on here is definitely the best material, um, and then Threats of Romance. So, everything in between is kind of uh, up to the listener to decide whether they like it or not. I personally found it slow and kind of lackluster, but if I'm listening to Manson, I'm, I'm listening to this for the heavy stuff, I'm listening to for the hooks and grooves and kind of super kind of catchy and edgy lyrics. Um, something that kind of makes me laugh and kind of go, oh, too. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. But, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I definitely bought the album. I, I love everything that Manson does for the most part. And I definitely recommend you checking it out. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description box below so you can do so and decide for yourself whether it's worthy of purchasing or not. But honestly, if you've been keeping up with Manson this entire time, there's no reason to stop now. You might as well pick this up and enjoy the 6 out of 10 tracks that are really good at least. So yeah. I'm Jesse Morgan, and I did buy this album. Cheers and thanks for watching.